Hello. All right. Oh. I'm sweating, guys. Hello. <laughs> what a way to open the stream. I'm sweating. Yes. Wah, wah, wah. Where's my game? I'll try to speed run the finale, guys. Let's go. Go. Shut up, music. Good evening. I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dalton. Shut up, bitch. Daddy, it's starting. Let's go. This must be the last day, guys. Okay? So, if not, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, we were, we were going for a wagey run, wage slave run, but it, it turned out to be a pro government run. <laughs> It, it, it was gonna it was gonna happen eventually it's been over 13 years since your dad, dad died you visited his grave a few times since then normally during times of stress or when you're trying to figure out figure something out or when you just want some peace and quiet today is no different you feel sam's hand on your shoulder giving you a reassuring squeeze you're grateful that they are still here with you just having them by your side always seem to make things easier the cow of raven catches your attention as it flies away Charlie was only eight when his grandfather died. He didn't really appreciate how big the loss was at the time. But as you got older, you did your best to pass on what your dad taught you. And now he's all grown up. He's actually starting to teach you, which is strange, but in the nicest way. You're proud of the man he's now, he's now become. That's not true. <laughs> Susie, poor Susie. But you wouldn't give to... You wouldn't give to her... You wouldn't give to have her back. What you wouldn't... Okay. <laughs> Can't read. What you wouldn't give to have, have her back, even just argue with you. You just wanted to explore the world. So curious. So full of life. Into liberation night, everything changed then. So many lives destroyed. Your relationship with Chris has always been an up and down, but of late you seem to actually be getting along. It makes a nice change and has certainly made life easier with Sam. But that's family. You've got to take the good with the bad. You may be in an albeit expensive care home now, but it's still comforting to know your mother is around, even if she barely recognizes you anymore. She can die? That's nice. Uh, her presence is always reassuring. You could do with that. You could do with that now. You turn away and wander in the direction of the car. You, con you can't control life, but what happens? Who leaves and who dies? I mean. That's not entirely true. All you can do, I mean, the video game. Well, all you can do is keep, go keep going and see what gets thrown at you next. What is life, if not a series of, uh, series of little decisions that defines us? Question mark. True, and we will never know which ones would take us on, t take us one way, and which one would bring us here. I'm still sweating, guys. <laughs> Stop sweating! Is it time? Is it time? Are we playing the finale? Megan's gonna fucking lose it. Oh shit, says the finale. 
Seven years since the election, jeez! Evening, Alex. I know lately what we've been putting out has been little more than government-prescribed drivel. But I'd like you to pay particular attention during tonight's show. It's... it's important. It's also worth noting we're still having problems with the equipment. Lock buttons, screens flickering on and off, sparks and the like. I'm sure you'll manage without issue. Oh, and don't forget, you've got free reign of the SFX buttons now, so make sure you use them to keep things live. Cool! Oh my god, the fucking pro government and I hate it. Hate it, guys. It happened. It was gonna happen. Eventually. Wait, that's no, Megan's no, daughter? Not even a cake. I'm sorry, no. Okay. No worries. How old are you then, Cole? Okay, here we go. Big smiles. I've actually gained okay. a year. I celebrated 44 last year, but it's actually this year. <laughs> Brilliant. You're 44. I'm going in five. Fuck. Four. Three. Good evening and welcome Spicy to the podcast. Spicy enough audience responses, Alex. Tonight, I'm Megan and Ooh. I'm joined as always by the inimitable Robin and Patrick. How are we? Well, we have got so much going on tonight. I'm excited. I'd say I'm about a 12, Megan. <laughs> on the excitement scale. Yeah, exactly. We have got so much SoCo stuff coming up. We sure... Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Stop, man. Come on. They're gonna mess with me in the f in the final there, right? All right. Fuck! Hurry up! I'm not gonna do my a lot of uh, reviews today, so I just wanna be done with this. Later tonight on one at six thirty. Easy. Evening, Alex. I know lately what we've been putting out has been little more than government prescribed drivel. But I'd like you to pay particular attention during tonight. Blah, blah, blah. Oh! It's also worth noting we're still having problems. Guys! With Lock buttons, screens flickering on and off, sparks and the like. My kind of ending. Oh, and don't forget, you've got you know what? Of the SFX if, now. if, Make uh... Sure if Resistance is gonna fucking interfere, if, if, if they wanna interfere, just, let's just end, let them. What have you got me? Let's just let them be. No, come on, seriously. Not even a cake. I'm sorry, no. Okay. No worries. How old are you then, Cole? Okay, here we go. Big smiles. I've actually gained a year. I celebrated 44 last year, but it's actually this year. <laughs> Brilliant. You're 44. I'm <laughs> going in five, four, <laughs> three. Good evening and welcome to the nightly show. It's so good. Yay! I'm Megan and I'm joined as always by the inimitable Robin and Patrick. How are we? Well, we have got so much. That's Patrick. Oh. About 12, Megan. On the that's not scale. that's not Megan's daughter. Okay. We have got so True. much SoCo stuff coming up. We sure do. Oh my god, I did it again! We'll be cooking up a store. We'll be announcing the winners of our big competition, Visions of the Future. And we'll be joining oh, This is just horrible. For a game of Wheel of Proof. And I'll even be showing you. Just horrible, man. I can't have that. Jesus. Not in the first first seconds of the uh, broadcast. Man. Very so. Uh, final try. Final try. Final try. Up later tonight on one. Evening, Alex. I know lately what we've been putting out has been little more than government prescribed drivel. But I'd like you to pay particular attention during tonight's show. It's. It's important. Why? It's also worth noting we're still having problems with the equipment. Lock buttons, screens flickering on and off, sparks and the like. I'm sure you'll manage without issue. Of oh, course. Forget, I'm a pro. Of the SFX buttons now, so make sure you use them <laughs> to keep things lively. Hurry up, man. Since the cancellation of Incisors, what have you got, apparently me? it's mainly jigsaws and arson. At midnight, no, it's the full Don't territorial okay. weather, Sorry, fertility, no. and birth report. And that's okay. followed at 12.20 right. by the Clenfilinogoth Valley Mel Voice Cole? Choir. Okay, David. here we go. Big smiles. I've actually gained a year. 
I celebrated 44 last year, but it's actually this year. <laughs> Brilliant. You're 44. I'm going in five, four, <laughs> three. Good evening and welcome Spice to... Spice it up with some audience, audience responses, Alex. I'm Shut up, bitch. I'm joined, as always, by the inimitable Robin and Patrick. How are we? Well, we have got so much going on tonight. I'm excited. I'd say I'm about a 12, Megan, <laughs> on the excitement scale. Yeah, exactly. We have got so much SoCo stuff coming up. We sure do. We have celebrity chef Jordan Brankley, who will be cooking <laughs> up the We'll be announcing the winners of our big competition, Visions of the Future. And we'll be joined by a very special guest for a game of Wheel of Truth. And I'll even be showing you how to make your own Leader's Day gifts. We've got all of that and so much more tonight on The Nightly Show. Oh, great. Here we go, guys. I hear from people like you every day. People who wonder, does nobody care anymore? But we care. Here at Disrupt, we want to reassure you that your freedom is our number one priority. And we won't rest until this sick experiment is brought to an end. One way or another. Right, let's have some applause on the way to the next section. Right, but first, you know you love them. So Robert, give us an update on our lovely nightly show pets in Pet Corner. Splendid, that's the ticket. Shut up, boss. First up, we have our hamster, Lord Cheeks. Now, he's a squat winter grey with the scientific name Adipem stultus, and he lives here with us in this cage. Hamsters love hoarding, and they actually have special pouches in their cheeks for storing food. He loves carrots, apples, and chewing tobacco. Now, hamsters are nocturnal, so we'll do our best not to wake him up. But let's just see if we can... Oh. <laughs> well, the door has been left open. Um, so, um, it looks as though Lord Chinks has actually gone for a little wander. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure he will be around here somewhere. <laughs> In the meantime, let's say hello to our tortoise. Now, after last month's viewer vote, she is now, of course, called Slow Barbara. And don't panic, even though it is December, Babs here doesn't actually hibernate. Let's say hello. Oh, she's sleeping. Oh, Babs. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh. Those are our nightly show pets, Megan, both alive and well. Back to you. Thanks, Robin. We'll check in on them or some very similar animals at the same time <laughs> tomorrow. Now then, I hope you're hungry, because if not, you're about to be. Patrick Bannon is with Chef Jordan Rankley, and they're going to be showing us how to knock up a delicious apple pie. Here we go. It's time to go into the kitchen. Don't forget the SFX buttons. Shut up. That's right, and I'm joined here by Chef Jordan Rankley. Welcome to the Nightly <laughs> Show Kitchen. How's it compared to I love the colours. It's vibrant. It's fresh. <laughs> it's so good. She's so good. Sorry? What? Oh, fuck! I missed no. it! I was and laughing. You six restaurants. You've been awarded nine Ballon Lessons no, no. across your career. And you've worked alongside the best chefs in the world. Tonight you've got me. Oh, are you worried? <laughs> Am I fucking worried? Are you worried? <laughs> Are you fucking worried? Yes. Um, so, uh, what are we making today, chef? So, we've got a family over for Leader's Day. Yep. They're hungry. We're going to make them a delicious apple pie. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> it's got sweetness. It's got the acidity of the fruit. Mm. And then get the richness of that pastry. Incredible. Wow. OK, so where do we start? So we've got to start by making our filling. So we've got about a kilogram of fresh cooking mm. apples here. Mm. Fucking beautiful. And we're going to slice these up perfectly. Yep. And then straight into the pan. Uh, so, uh, your new show, uh, Demon Kitchen Heart Eater, starts on Friday here <laughs> on Channel One. So, tell us about that. <laughs> so, teams of young chefs come into my kitchen, yep. and one by one I destroy <laughs> them emotionally. And at this time, I teach them some basic knife skills. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, Patrick. What are you doing? What? <laughs> Shit. Is that how you cut? Fuck, you'll lose a fucking finger. Oh, don't worry, I've got spares. <laughs> right, so, uh, 
uh, once we've done that, we uh, send these aside. Do you want to make the pastry? Yep. Bowl. Oh. Yeah? Okay. Sugar. Butter. Yep. We mix that together and then... Oh, egg. Yep. Okay. Egg. I can't do that. What are you doing, you fucking donkey? Are your brains the size of that fucking egg? Oh, no, Shaz. So far, guys, I can't concentrate. Right. Mix that with a wooden spoon and work in that flour, okay? Work that into a nice ball of dough, just like that. <laughs> so, uh, what does the notoriously fierce Jordan Rankly do to unwind? <laughs> oh, fuck! Oh, what's that? What is that? Well, it's, it's a bit, bit lumpy. Lumpy? He could fucking pass for a sack of spuds. Touch that! Touch it! Oh. Yeah? Pathetic. That goes into chill. Now, we're mixing our filling. <laughs> okay. Apples, sugar, yes. cinnamon. Mm. <laughs> right. So, uh, oh, you own six restaurants across five territories. <laughs> Which is your favourite? Are you mixing that or fucking it? What? <laughs> Are you going to light a candle? Take it out to dinner? Oh my fucking god. Fucking mix it for fuck's sake. Right. Now we're rolling out two thirds of our pastry. Oh god. A bit of flour into the dish. <laughs> uh, and uh, the filling goes next, right? Absolutely right. Oh, lovely. Okay. Then we're taking the remaining pastry, rolling that into a round, and that goes to the top. Beautiful. Mm. Lovely. Okay. Right. Dude, shut up, man. Round the rim. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm and trying. Gently. All the way around, and we're cutting five slashes very carefully for the steam, yeah. and then brushing the whole thing with a beaten egg. Lovely. Oh, okay. Egg. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Oh my God! You, you, come here, come here, you. <laughs> That's a disgrace. I'd rather dry my eyeballs up my fucking ass than look at that. I'd rather use my tongue to tie my shoes off of a fucking shit kicking contest. Do you understand? <laughs> then it goes in the oven for 45 minutes. Oh, get <laughs> in the oven while you're at it. Useless. <laughs> you! Come here, you! You're the worst fucking thing to happen to food since cyanide. Do you know that? <laughs> Tell you what. Fuck off! Oh. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> fuck off! Yes, okay, well, while I do that, <laughs> let's go now to Megan and Robin, who will be announcing the winners of our competition, Visions of the Future! A bit more audience reaction would be nice, Alex. Well, that looks delicious. <laughs> if you want to follow along at home, then make sure you write in with a stamped address envelope and we'll send you the fact sheet. So, Robin, look at all these amazing entries to the Vision of the Future competition. Yes, we challenged you to show us your predictions of the future and we were just inundated with entries, weren't we, Megan? From wacky inventions to global problem solving, they are all amazing and we had the best time looking through each one. It was so tough narrowing it all down. So we have some amazing runners up. In third place, drum roll please. <gasps> we have Hamish, who's three from Lumwelly. Oh. <laughs> he calls this still life and the future of God. And it really blew us away. Whoa. Work here. And I can really feel every passionate stroke of the brush. Mm. If you look here, you'll see a beautifully rendered, what I thought at first was a smiley face or perhaps a cat. But I think if you really look, you'll see it's actually a representation of the seeming futility of death through the eyes of the living. Indeed. <laughs> He's also chosen to just leave a little bit blank, mm. which I think is really interesting. If you know Hamish and his work, of course, he, he loves focusing on the negative space mm. rather than the image itself. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. And such talent from one so young, Megan. But next up, we have our second place entry. So in second, drum roll, please. We have Keith, 41, from Dunglees. Yeah, Keith, we were sort of aimless towards our younger viewers, but still, he has sent in his idea of the future, which he's calling Ravaged Earth. Indeed, he says, and he's really rather detailed, notes um deprived of basic resources society will resort to a brutal system of weekly battles to the death 
where only the victor may breed. <laughs> nice. It says at the bottom here, either that or about the same, but maybe a bit worse. I really love his attention to detail. You can see the sort of gladiatorial arena, and then what I can only assume is Keith himself pulling off this chap's <laughs> head and shouting, um, come back to me, Linda. Oh, Keith. Maybe if you spent more time outdoors and less time entering children's competitions, she might not have won. <laughs> <laughs> That's a special one there. Wow! It's time to reveal our winner. All our runners-up will receive a day out <laughs> in inflatable happy land on an industrial estate just off the A40. Sorry about that, Keith. But our lucky winner will win the chance to spend the day at the Department of Change to see how our Ooh. teammates are actually making the new future a reality every day. And the winner is... Oh, drum roll, please. <laughs> I think we have clapping, baby. <laughs> we have a proud history of lobbying for real jobs for real people. And we only partner with brands that share those values. So today, we are delighted to announce partnerships with Remington Fist, Stank Beverages, and Empire Tobacco. What's happening? Brands that made this country what it is. Brands you can trust. And brands that can help make us great. It's getting involved in the party, aren't they? This one. We've got a bit haywire. The sign in what's to come. That was weird. Well, if our winners have inspired you to make some artwork of your own, do keep sending them in, and yours could be displayed in our gallery here. Well done again to everyone who took part. We're going to take a break now, but when we come back, we'll be playing the Wheel of Truth and making some lovely homemade gifts. Don't go away. We'll be back after this. Right. From what I can tell, the old vision mix is getting a bit worse for wear there, Alex. Expect your kit will be deteriorating a bit more in this next segment, so oh, be great. careful. I can't stress enough how important it is that we keep the show going tonight. Shut up. I'm, I'm on the bus. <laughs> Not tonight. I'll get cards arranged for you both. Find me when you're done and I'll take you out through the um, loading bay. Same with E. Uh, kind of dessert though. We were, we, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. <laughs> I'll try to make this uh, less pro going when that's possible. <laughs> We kind of tried to keep things uh, in balance, but in the end, uh, we didn't play that one disrupt video uh, two days ago and in the game. We got this ending. Or maybe three days, I don't know. Like d during uh, Donaldson's um, rebellious act, and uh, he tried to host. He tried to keep people hostage. During that, you gotta, I think, play the tape or something. Or maybe after that, I don't remember. Can we get him anymore. Right I'm not sure about this grandma one. Oh, he's writing the name of the guest at the moment. But I just wouldn't say grandma. Grandmother? <laughs> I love her. Yes. <laughs> Grandmother's arsehole. That's much better. Oh, oh, okay, everyone, if I could have your attention, please. Sarah just needs a word. Apparently, there's been some sort of disturbance near the studio. <laughs> now, I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, but I wanted to let you know that I've asked for it. What do you mean? And they're already on their way. Oh, it's gonna go down, guys. Okay, this time you've said it. Laughing, and we're going in five, four, three. <laughs> Has the audience gone to sleep? Remember the SFX buttons. We can't wait to taste Patrick's pie. I don't know, I think I could wait. Well, here it is, fresh out the oven. Oh. Well, it does look amazing. Jordan, Patrick do well. Let's just say that pie's got more crust than my grandmother's arsehole. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Shut up. Come on, try it. Dig in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> go and get ready for that next feature. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Every night we play a game of Wheel of Truth with our celebrity guests. But I know what you're thinking. Uh, Megan, we've only got one celeb guest. <laughs> well observed, viewers, well observed. 
Well then, I better bring her out. <laughs> the surprise guest. What do you think? Here she is, best-selling author, lawyer, and thinker. I mean, she's only the bloomin' team leader. <laughs> it's Julia Salisbury. No way. Oh, no way. It's the president. <laughs> Just about to say the same thing. Now, don't get too comfortable. It's time to head over to Robin and Patrick as we play Wheel of Truth. Spice it up with some audience responses. Shut up. Wheel of Truth. That's right. It's that part of the show where we pit our celebs against each other to see if we can break them. That's right, Robin. They're going to spin the wheel to pick around, and it could be anything from box of flies to slap my face. <laughs> they really have no idea what's in store. So up first, we have Jordan. Oh. Let's give it a spin. Yeah, here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking soon and out. <laughs> Okay, it's oh. fact or fib. Fact or fib. Jordan, is it true that you've been known to order takeaway for a dinner party? Whoa! It's one fucking time. One time. Well, I didn't think if that pie was anything to go by, you did them a favour. Oh, oh, not so fast there, Julia. Fact or fib. Fact or fib. We heard you've got a very interesting way of saving time during the laundry. Oh, my God. You absolutely no, no. I can't. <laughs> What's happening? Okay, disrupt. We understand right. your frustration. We built this nation, but for what? To wait in line while outsiders fill up our hospitals? To lose a job to someone who doesn't even speak the language? No. We don't think so either. <laughs> Raise my taxes, we're clearly not paying you enough. Come to my dressing room after the show, we'll sort you out. Oh, are you blushing, Patrick? Is all this talk of bras embarrassing you? Blushing? I mean, I'm not blushing. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh, 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 how is it? How is it? Oh, fucking oh, so oh, we made it extra fishy. <laughs> I need my fucking mouth. Do you know how much these taste buds are worth? Well, we've got time for one more. Just one more. Spin, so come, Julian, go! <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
Okay, okay, so, oh, Julia, take a look in that box under your desk there. <laughs> Rats. So funny. Amazing. Cheeks is trying to get it on the game. Bless him. Julia, what have you what have you got in that box? It's not it's not cheese, is it? Cheese! It's not cheese! Juggling balls? What am I supposed to do with these? Well, give it a go for us. But I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Come on. Do it, do it, I want to do it. Unexpected. Yeah, well, yeah. gosh, that was our game of Wheel of Time. We're gonna make it. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> oh, God, it really was, wasn't it? But now it's time to head over to Megan in Crafty Corner. Less is more Shut like up! That's right, you join me in Crafty Corner, where today I'm going to be ably assisted by Julia. Come on over here. Goodness me, I don't know how you're keeping your dinner down. I can still smell that fish. <laughs> well, to be honest, I've had worse. I used to be just to Clement's house. Oh, well, I hope you've got your artsy hat on because today we're going to be making something very close to my heart. It's our little studio. Look at that. Isn't it adorable? Oh, all of us there on the sofa. Oh, wow. okay. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, is that all you in there? Yeah, it is. If we can just get a little zoom in. There we are. Oh, I don't know about you, Julia, but I always leave my holiday shopping to the last minute. Oh, every year. I do it every year. Well, luckily, these make amazing gifts. Shall we get cracking? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> We're going to start with a shoe box Lovely. here. And Julia, that's it. Grab those scissors. I just want you to get rid of this front panel here. Perfect. <laughs> Will do. Are you big celebrators in your house, Julia? Oh, yes. Yeah. No, in my house, we show our love through food, like big dinners, loads of drinks. Absolutely right. That's the best bit about any holiday. It's all that food. This bit as well. Absolutely right. Cutting along the line there. Do be careful with the scissors at home. Make sure you're being supervised <laughs> if you are a child. <laughs> there we go. Fabulous. There we go. OK, so it's going to look a little something like this. And I've got one here I made earlier. We painted it with a poster paint, white to match our lovely curtains here in the studio. But you can obviously have whichever backdrop you like. Like a nice shiny gold number. Well, exactly right. So we're going to make bits of our set now to put in the studio, perhaps a little desk. So I'm just going to grab this piece of card. I've just got it from a little cereal box packet. I think you, I'll give you this one, Julia. Oh, thank I? you so you much. <laughs> and all you need to do is cut along the lovely. lines there. Fabulous. So what's the best part of any Leader's Day dinner, do you reckon? Uh, I don't even have to think about it. Really? I love the three <laughs> potato pie. Three potato pie? I don't know that one. You know, with the chips covered in the mash or wrapped up in a jacket potato. That just means it, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know, but that sounds <laughs> starchy. <laughs> well done, Julia. So now she's folding over a little bit there. What it's going to look like at the end is this little rectangular shape there. And we're going to pop it in the middle. Bit of sticky tape on the back there so it sticks down. Now we need a sofa. That's what we need next. We're going to make that out of a lovely paper cup. <laughs> Have fun down there. Over. Knocking it all over. <laughs> I've got one though, Megan. Good. Fantastic. You're just going to cut along lovely. the line here down the middle. Exactly right. And then when you've done that, around the bottom and again around the top. Well done. When you're done, <laughs> oh, there we go. It's going to look a little something like this. <laughs> look what I've done there. I've stuck some felt down. Nice and comfortable sofas. <laughs> yes, can't have our tiny Megan having an uncomfortable sofa, can well, we? Absolutely not. <laughs> She'll be on the phone to her tiny agent and getting someone tiny fired. <laughs> Oh, there's only one thing missing, isn't there, Julia? What is that? Oh, a higher calibre of guests. Nearly. It's people. <laughs> <laughs> so all we've done to make our little people is we've stuck a cocktail stick into a bottle cap. <laughs> mm, we just need a face for that now. Uh, I've got a good one here. I know it well. <laughs> it's me. Lovely. I'm going to stick it down there. A little bit of sticky tape. Oh, my felt's going everywhere. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I'm a bit lonely. Let's take Robin and Patrick over. Do, 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 do. 
sitting down on the couch over there. Oh, there you go. And, and well, well, I'll make myself just comfortable. Just, just <laughs> there. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> and these, of Lovely. course, are all made and cut out of our favourite newspapers or magazines. So you can have any guests you like. Julia, is there anyone else you'd like oh. in a studio? Oh, yes. Well, well, I'm going to be playing Wheel of Truth with yeah. Ronnie from Heatran. Really nice. <laughs> yes, put that in the way. Um, yes, he's going to be teaching me choreography and I'll be teaching him foreign policy mm, and of course you can decorate them however you want perhaps you're a bit i don't know nostalgic for the old look of our studio we've got the blue studio down there oh so red. i've got sheila quick step being interviewed there by oh um sorry that's that's not supposed to be oh. <laughs> well we're all out of time i'm afraid megan it's time for a break when we come back i'll be on the couch of chat talking to some of you and i just cannot I guess I reached the one! After these messages. Right, coming up soon, Alex. You'll know it when you see it. Whatever happens, keep the show going. Shut up, bitch. You did remember. You're coming with me. B? Okay, I'll take it. <clears throat> <clears throat> What is this? Best show off my emerging womanly curves. After much pacing, and I confess, a few tears. I settled on the zip back, a boxy pleated skater skirt in dark blue with white sweetheart blouse and the necklace Harry had given me when we'd met in the woods and I'd allowed him to frolic in my glades. It's an honest account of my childhood, because in the new future, so not concerned there's no the need for secrets. Friends. There was just so much injustice in the world, I realised. As Portia Hamilton man. Don't worry, I'll deal with it. Sarah, um, we've had a couple of the crew mention seeing suspicious activity in the loading bay. Men in balaclavas or some such. I'll check it out. I'll come with you. Thanks for letting me know. Just make sure we're not all about to get blown up, eh? I think that's unlikely. <clears throat> I'll go make sure everything's ready. Well, I hope when I take over as the new regular host, things become a little less chaotic. <laughs> Sorry. What's that? What? Oh, yes. Didn't Bozeman tell you I'll be here every night? What? So, um, I missed that meeting. I was at an appointment. Oh, well. Oh, don't worry. It's not like you're being fired or anything. First attacked? Like, Probably, yeah. Until some such will be fine. <laughs> I'll let them uh, well, do their thing, though. I'm not going to cut the <laughs> broadcast. The ratings, apparently. <laughs> of course, Prime Minister. Ten seconds. Jenny? No, anyway, so. Okay. Whatever. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. Welcome back to The Nightly Show, where I'm joined once again on the couch of chat by Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, who's agreed Happy. to answer some questions from the public. They're always my toughest critics, Megan. <laughs> Indeed they are. So, first up tonight is a question from one of our elderly viewers, and she's on the line right now. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. What's your name and where do you live? Florence, thank Only you for calling. You. You're on with Prime Minister Julia Salisbury. Do you have a question, Florence? Yes. Yes, I do have a question. Okay, would you like to Hello? ask that question now? <laughs> oh, yes. Right you are, dear. Prime Minister, with all that hard work on your hands, how does your skin manage to keep that healthy glow? Oh, bless you. <laughs> what a lovely question. <laughs> I suppose with my line of work, there's not a lot of time for a skincare regime, as I believe they call it. So <laughs> I guess I've just got my mother and father to thank. I, I suppose I've just got lucky jeans. Lucky jeans? Oh, that's what my cloth calls the denims he was wearing when we first. <laughs> <laughs> yep, thank you for that question, Florence. <laughs> Your Clint sounds like a right one. Thank you, Florence. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I wish I could say the same at her age. <laughs> Everyone needs a Clint, say Prime Minister. Or a Clara. True. Perhaps. Megan? Uh, let's go to our next questioner tonight. He's calling from right here in the capital. Hi, caller, can you hear me? Yes. That's Jeremy! Just about. It's uh, not a good line. Well, I think we all know that voice. Good evening, Mr Donaldson. Good evening. Do you have a question for the Prime Minister, Paula? Several, actually. Well, maybe it would be better if we tried to get a better line. I, I could have the station call you back. Don't 
Oh shit. Call a surprise guest. Our second of the evening. Please welcome Jeremy Donaldson. She what? She knows? This man is a wanted criminal. Why am I okay? I like censor that. Sarah, she's not here at the moment, Prime Minister. Well, let her the moment she returns. If we can find the keys to the studio doors, that is. Apparently, they've been locked and no one knows where they are. That's hey, unconsciously careless of you, Jenny. You know there's only one way in and out of the studio. A peculiarity of these old buildings. I'm sure they'll turn up. They'll have you all arrested for this, you know. Oh, come, Prime Minister, what are you so afraid of? Surely a woman of your stature can withstand a few questions. Mm. For the viewers at home. Oh, shit. <laughs> Very well. I can't say I'm impressed with this irresponsible stunt, but believe it or not, I used to have a lot of respect for you, Mr. Donaldson. Please don't attempt to flatter me, Prime Minister. No, I'm not. It's true. I've watched you sink your journalistic teeth into the great and powerful. So, out of respect for the man you once were, I'll dance your strange little tango. But, I warn you, Mr. Donaldson, you better be nimble on your feet. Because you'll only have one chance to tango with me. Let's put on our dancing shoes, then, shall we? I'd like to ask you about sterility first, Prime Minister. Yes, a, a terrible situation. Caused in no small part by the actions of your government. Well, we can't control the weather systems that unfortunately Unfortunately have spread the fallout from your bombs and then even layer across the territories. That's what our scientists say, yes. Still births at an all-time high. Along with babies being born with terminal birth defects. No! Babies that you're somewhat callously referred to as unviolent. It's just a word, Mr. Donaldson. No need for conspiracy theories. If you say so. How many unviables have been born since Liberation Night, Prime Minister? Too many. Way too many. I mean, I mean obviously I don't have the exact figures. Oh, I believe but... we do, Prime Minister. Oh, shit. Yes, there have, in fact, been two million... 581,280 unviable births since Liberation Night, according to official government figures. So, 14 million deaths on Liberation Night, and then another 2.5 million infant mortalities, assuming you actually managed to count them all, which, given the limits of bureaucracy, seems extremely unlikely. I'm sorry, is there a question? You made a decision one November evening five years ago, and as a result of that decision, 16 and a half million people are dead. Damn. Cameras? Of course I do, Mr. Donaldson. I, I regret every grieving family, every life destroyed. I came into politics to help people. You came into politics <laughs> to help people. In that case, Prime Minister, where did it all go so horribly wrong? Well... Mr. Donaldson, Miss Wolf, I suppose this is where we all have to put on our grown-up trousers, isn't Please it? Please do not patronise our audience, Prime Minister. Oh, why not? That's how they like to be treated. They want a government to keep them safe, happy, equal and free. That's our job, you see, to, to make a perfect um, circle out of that impossible square. And if we can do just that one impossible thing, then they don't ask a lot of questions. They're not like you two. They, they don't want to see how the magic trick's done. They, they just want to gasp at the miraculous effect. So it's the public's fault. So, it's no one's fault. It, it's just the way things are. You asked me where it all went wrong, but, but the ugly truth is it never did. I weighed the advantages of action and inaction, and I acted. And without making these tough choices, we would not be where we are today. I believe any decent leader would have done the same. Any decent leader? how things were before the new future the, the homelessness the despair the minute the, the billions abandoned to a life of miserable poverty that's a form of death too it, it's just much much slower and infinitely more pernicious any decent leader yes any decent leader including peter Clay. how dare you peter was my best friend is it true you never told Prime Minister Clement <laughs> about your plans for liberation? I am. Um, well, I, 
In the weeks that followed, you fought with him repeatedly and passionately, We've didn't you? We've spoken to staff from Team HQ who claim to have overheard several conversations. conversations. <laughs> yes, we disagreed. Frequently and loudly. That, that was how we worked. That, that was why we worked. Didn't you? Did you? Yes. Yes, until we realised that we no longer shared the same, um, uh, the same values. Values like compassion, how Prime Minister. How dare you? Everything I've done, everything is out of compassion. But sometimes love needs to be tough. And Peter... Mm. Well, Peter never understood that. It's why I caught in my conscience. And, and now... Now he's gone. You need a moment, Prime Minister. Perhaps now might be a good time for us to show the viewers at home some footage that has found its way to me. It was filmed in early December, five years ago. Jenny, can we have this prepared on screen four, please? Yes, Jeremy. We'll need a couple of minutes. You're right to continue, Prime Minister. <laughs> Peter was the heart of advance. <laughs> they loved him in a way that they've never loved me. They, they find me cold, emotionless. <laughs> But I have to be strong. I, I'm a woman. I, I, I can't shoot tears. I, I can't shoot weakness. I can't shoot this. I, I would have thought that you would have understood that. Are you sure you don't need a moment to compose yourself, Prime Minister? I'm sure we can cut away to something about buttons. <laughs> this is cruel. Advance are guilty of many things, but we were never cruel. Well, I think oh. that's up for uh... Please, just... I need a minute. Just, just point that camera away from me. I have a question, Prime Minister. Fine. Fine, just ask your question. Why are there no tears on your face? <laughs> <laughs> Uh -oh. uh, they're here for Mr. Donaldson and to escort me safely out of the building. I very much imagine this will be the last broadcast any of you ever make. Jeremy, we have to get you out of here now. Uh, except there's a small army directly outside the door and I believe there's only one way in or out due to a peculiarity in the design of these old buildings. She's played us. I can't go back. I can't go back to that. And yet to betterment you will surely go. Don't you worry, Jeremy. The moment will take you. Oh, perhaps you'd like to join him. After all, aiding and abetting an escaped convict is, of course, a crime in itself. Leave them out. We're in! I surrender! Oh, shit. There's no need for violence! I have to know! There's no need to rest! Oh, oh shit! <laughs> Okay, man. I got you this time. I got you this time, man. Do you have a family, Alex? Perhaps you'd like to think how well they'd cope without you. Shut the fuck up, President. <laughs> Madam President. I'm trying, man. I want you to cut Alex Winston off. I don't care how you do it. What's that? Sorry, Prime Minister. The tannoy seems to be broken. You, you blessed the bitch! Whoa! You have to understand. No, you have to understand. 14 million deaths on our hands? It's unthinkable. And this is exactly why I didn't tell you. Because you knew I tried fucking stopping you. You are a bloody liability, Peter. Can't you see that? Drunk or sober, you cannot be trusted. I'm the fucking cold prime minister. How did I get this? I'm supposed to be a friend. Well, maybe you see I had your best in the really going drunk and stupid in the shop. You, you lucky bastard. You How did they get their hands on this, dude? And what would you have done if I had told you what we were planning? I'd have stopped you. I'd have gone on the fucking news and I'd have exposed you if I had to. What? I would have stopped I gotta censor some of this. <laughs> I'm sure of that. And the whole country would have fucking I got starved. Well, you agonized over your morals. Or uh, it's going to be a game of one. All our good work all wiped out. Good work. Good 
fucking work? It's been three weeks and they're still putting out the fucking fires. Let's talk about this tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow? You're gonna kill him? gonna be on every news channel in the world telling people what a fucking monster you are. No, you won't. Tomorrow? The <laughs> laughing train. <laughs> fucking job. Just like I have to. Okay. We'll see, won't we? Jesus. Or uh, do this. Christ. I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> Execute the order. What was the number, guys? Hello, Adrian. Something six. Sorry to bother you so late at night. Um, that thing we discussed, uh, I'm afraid we're going to have to put it into action. Oh, shit! You were right. It's happening! Liability. Thank you. Oh, and uh, Adrian. Uh, I think we're six to six. To six. Not six to nine or to any of these. Let me know when it's done. Boo! You suck! Nothing. No one must ever know. Thank you. You criminal! Look at Megan. <laughs> this is some group television, guys. There's more? Holy shit. Okay, am I gonna get the disrupt ending game? I don't want to get disrupt ending. Holy shit. <laughs> And your shit. It's not what it seems to be. Isn't it? Because it seems to show you ordering the cold blooded murder of Peter Clement. Perhaps you need a bit of betterment to yourself. Oh, don't you judge me! Average baby, as soon as you're recording. No, yeah. you called here tonight. You work for me, remember? No. <laughs> not anymore. I quit. Damn! Yeah. left, you'll need this. Best character. You can take me away now. I'm done. Do you have anything to say, Prime Minister? You're done. <laughs> all of you, this program is captured. <laughs> Effective immediately. You roll One bad broadcast. <laughs> no. Arrest them all. I'm not the criminal here. You all saw that footage. You know who should be arrested here. I am the Prime Minister, and I will do what I want to do when I tell you. No, Julia. No one is. Do your bloody job. <laughs> Just you wait. The people will demand it. Won't you? New government, new start, new journalists. Maybe they'll be better than we were. Maybe it will all be better next time. Oh. 50 seconds, Prime Minister. Can't leave any dead air. That's a crime too. <laughs> 45 seconds. <laughs> what can be said in 45 seconds? A soundbite. Headline. How do you convey the shades of grey when there's only enough air time for crass blacks and whites? And even if I could, would you watch? Or would you change channel? Look for something more exciting. There's boring. Yeah, you suck, boo! And if that really is what you do, is this really all my? I don't know. In some profound 
Maybe mine too, lady. Yeah. Anyways. My name is Julia Salisbury. See you next time. Make tomorrow better. <laughs> what now? I'm on left. I couldn't get the... I couldn't get the, um... Neutral ending, though. How do you get the neutral one? The man's blood within the nation, hidden in industry, yeah. He was still seeking funding to get to the moon, he's also... he also... Need scientists and engineers, nice. Who was Lil C? I forgot. Oh. Nice. How about crazy, crazy Neil, man? Skip this. All right, I'll skip it. I shouldn't skip it though. I will look into how can one get the neutral ending. Not for a broadcast. How to get the neutral ending? Neutral ending. There's so many endings. What the fuck? Yeah, Jeremy can die, definitely. I can see it now. He can also survive and uh, join the government, and he can he can become a pro government character. <laughs> what the fuck? Kind of fucked up. So this government can re -edu educate uh, Jeremy Donaldson. Kind of fucked up. Honestly, <laughs> I can't find my ending though. Ending called a new feature, but right? I can't find it. How do you stay neutral? Potential major spoilers here. I don't know how to explain this without bringing them up. So it, if you dare, although I don't know if this is what you mean by stay neutral. I actually accidentally managed to get one of the neutral endings The one where a third party wins subsequent election on my first playthrough the trick is not to constantly stay neutral But instead to waffle on your positions Shift alli allegiances over time At first I had to Alex, I had Alex fully support advance At, After the incident with Jeremy's I had decided to have Alex support Disrupt for the rest of the game that is, until Jeremy asked to play the leaked tape in the final day, which I did, much to Ellen's blah 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 blah, blah running. 
Uh, the condition for this is not which faction has more support, but rather that Ellen and Jeremy live. Oh, Ellen and Jeremy live uh, until the end of the leak tape is played. If you want more information, blah blah blah. Anyways, we got the. Uh, what, what is this uh, achievement? Say? What is this achievement uh, description? Welcome in more advanced feature. It's still a pro-government ending, apparently. Oh, you kind of destroyed her uh, career, right? Cool game. Uh, a lot of repeatability, I guess. Um, you can also do challenge runs. The Gordon Ramsay parody was really hilarious. And I believe Jesus was a Kanye West uh, parody, and he was also hilarious too. And tip guys on. What? Junior's judgment. I'm Patrick Bannon, and this. Hey, what the, the fuck? Bulletin. The OG Patrick. Tonight, protesters filled the streets outside the High Court today as the high-profile trial of former Prime Minister Julia Salisbury began its opening arguments. If found guilty, Salisbury is facing multiple life sentences for charges including conspiracy to commit it's murder, him. war crimes, and even genocide for her role in the events of so-called Liberation Night. Meanwhile, with the restoration of elections just weeks away, voters across the country look ahead to new leadership. Nice. Possibly old leadership. As the front runner in the polls by some margin now is former Prime Minister Jacob Hamilton Mann, who crossed the floor to head up the Disrupt Party. Stock markets oh. surged in value this morning as those polling results were announced. And later, I'll be doing an in-depth look at your friend and mine. It's the calculator. <laughs> You unlocked and reached Julia's judgment. You found one out of 14 epilogues. Jesus! <laughs> 14. Wow. Chaos reigns. A lot of endings. Jeez. Wacky fun. I wonder what this is. Lady Telethon. Huh? What is this guy? <laughs> Telethon? Old system, nice. Alex Winston, it's Bozeman here, your boss. It's come to my attention that you've replaced Dave in the control room. Yes. Your performance so far has been mostly adequate. However, I'll need to observe myself to check you're up to snuff. And to that end, you'll now be mixing an old recorded broadcast to ensure you can do the job to my satisfaction. Don't worry, other than the odd tear and jump in the foot arch due to age, it shouldn't require you to deal with anything new. So do keep an eye on the sensor. They had stricter sensibilities in those days. And of course, don't forget to load the adverts. Bozeman out. I didn't really listen to that, but it's fine, I guess. It's fine. And lady scientist, Dr. Edith Blimey, debate in a discussion program with the right how long is this guys nightmare cameras are set who's going to tell graham i don't know can we even continue 
Well, you'll have to think of something. We'll go live in 10 seconds. Isn't uh, this Peter, I, guys? I'll keep looking for someone. I guess we'll just have to wing it until uh, then. Can you count us in? Oh, sure. Going live in five, four, three, two, one. What's happening? <laughs> From the capital, it's the St. Fanny's Hospital's TV fundraiser for dying children. And please welcome your host, it's the Dreamboat, Graham Bannon. Hello, it only is. Hello, it's Mr. <laughs> Bannon. Got one of them. Got one of them. Good night. <laughs> if you want to be my lady, lady, <laughs> then at least have my babies, babies. No, don't give me a maybe, maybe, no. I know what women are like. Shut up, bitch. Sorry, stop the music, stop the music. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I know I know I'm supposed to be starting the show, but I can't help but notice it. I mean, where's the audience? <laughs> I mean, who are you? I mean, this is an absolute nightmare, isn't it really? I mean, are we are live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first annual. Guys, I gotta go out. Maybe I'll play this later. Thanks for watching, though. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye bye. We are here tonight, as we may be aware, for one very important cause, and that is, of course, little Sally Button. Little Sally Button has a life threatening condition, and she will.